the GLJ Shorts. Lillian Surdi and Melanie Fink will be presenting their articles, holding the European Asylum Support Office accountable for its role in asylum decision-making, Mission Impossible, and the Action for Damages as a Fundamental Rights Remedy, holding Frontex liable. Both articles appeared in the special issue Border Justice, Migration and Accountability for Human Rights Violations in April 2020. In a nutshell, what is your article about? So both Lillian's and my article share a common starting point, which is that agencies in the EU have become quite powerful, but there is an accountability gap. And in relation to Frontex, the EU Borders Agency, and EASO, the European Asylum Support Office in particular, it's quite impossible for an individual to hold them to account when they are involved in human rights violations. So my article in particular looks at Frontex from a judicial perspective. I focus on a particular procedure, which is the action for damages. That always sounds quite odd because the action for damages is actually designed to recover economic loss. So I look at how we can use this for human rights purposes. And I have very good news because the main finding of my, ar of my article is that it is quite a flexible procedure and it is so adaptable that it can become actually quite a powerful tool for individuals to hold Frontex to account. I focus more specifically on EASO, which is a relatively new player, increasingly involved in processing asylum applications alongside national administrations, for example, in Greece. So the agency is currently subject to a host of accountability processes. However, there are two main problems. First, there is an intricate balance uh, between accountability and the independence of the agency. And secondly, as Melanie already highlighted, there is a lack of accessibility for the individual migrant or refugee to hold the agency accountable. So in my article, I analyze the potential of extrajudicial accountability through the European Ombudsman. She has already been called to assess EASO's role in asylum processing in Greece. I find that while there are some weaknesses in extrajudicial accountability, uh, there is potential there, mainly uh, due to the accessibility and procedural flexibility of the mechanism. So it has potential to ensure migrants' procedural rights. What's at stake and why now? So normally more power should have come with more effective accountability arrangements. However, this has not been the case. And recourse to implementing asylum obligations through EU agencies will only increase. We have the proposed regulation for a new European agency on asylum. We have the expected pact on migration and asylum that will only consolidate these developments. Therefore, addressing this accountability gap specifically in, the, uh, in this area becomes pressing. Yes, yeah, so what Lillian just illustrated is actually that as Europeans, we feel really strongly about these values like rule of law and human rights. But then you look at the border and it totally doesn't match this self-image that we have. And this has become this very polarizing debate between we are all terrible and human rights are useless anyway. So what I wanted to do is actually look at solutions. We have really strong institutions and human rights protection systems. So why not see whether we can use them and what we can do with these existing tools? Where do we go from here? So what my article has shown is the potential of soft enforcement, which so far is underexplored in this area. The new EASA regulation will most probably include internal ombuds type procedures in the form of an individual complaints mechanism. Frontex already has one. This process will be far more accessible for migrants. As my article has shown though, its effectiveness will depend ultimately on its legal design and guarantees around it. So the elephant in the room is, of course, that my article, what I proposed there, is in the end just a patch. It is much better than nothing, but the action for damages was just never designed as a human rights remedy, so it will never be a perfect one. 
So what I want to work on is a real long-term solution. I want to design a human rights complaints procedure for the EU. And I'm actually working on that uh, already. I'm also applying for funding to, to implement a bigger project on this question. And I'd be really excited to, to be able to do that. What would you have become if you hadn't gone into academia? Oh, that's a wonderful question. Um, my, my secret pastime that where you find me all the time when I'm not busy writing articles is in the, in the community circus. I really love aerial acrobatics. So in my second life, I will become an aerial acrobat. What was the best advice you ever got? Live life uh, like it is a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs>